With us now is the ever effervescent Frank McKay. How are you? Great, Donna. Thanks for having me. So good to see you. Talk show host to talk show host. Mm -hmm. uh, so tell us what's going on with your brand. Well, it depends what you're talking about. If you're talking uh, politically, we're in the middle of a, a political season here, and I'm about to release a book that is on politics. And I, I'm the chair of the Independence Party, if people uh, don't know that. But we also, or I also, host a uh, nationally syndicated radio show and a, and a nationally syndicated television show. And we kind of try not to blend the two worlds, but they do. You know, just, it's got, just going to happen. <laughs> so on the political scene, what's happening with this new book? I'm putting out a book, and I think at this point, we're going to call it, we are going to call it a party for the rest of us. Okay. Which means that... There are many of us out there, millions of us, and, and it may even be the majority of the people out there in the country that don't fit into any particular category. And I'll give you a quick example of, of why we're writing this. We, we get so much criticism that the Independence Party of New York and the Independence Party of America takes no stance on social issues. We pride ourselves on that. Hmm. What we want to do is we want to develop a brand, we want to develop a vehicle that will allow the candidates to speak directly to the American people without interference from... Uh, special interest groups, or for that matter, for political leaders like myself. We're not going to put a gun to somebody's head and say, this is how you have to feel about abortion, or this is how you have to feel about marriage equality or gun control. The candidate will answer those questions and talk directly to the people. This so is truly independent, which truly is what independent. it's supposed to stand for. This is a departure from anything that's ever been in, in the country. There's never been anything like this. So we get criticism from, certainly from the press, who either leans left or leans right. So we're getting it from both sides. We don't care. We're not going to, we're not going to change how we view the world. The world will be changed, dramatically changed, as soon as there's a third major party in this country that takes no stance on social issues. And that'll allow the candidate to speak directly to the American people. So we're a vehicle. And we have a book coming out, I have a book coming out, that'll explain that. And it's a party for the rest of us. So if you feel very strongly about these issues, don't worry about it. There's two well-funded major parties that'll tell you exactly how you should feel, and that'll pat you on the back for it. But there's a whole bunch of us that, don't, that simply just don't fit into those categories. Well, congratulations party for the on rest that. Of us. Thank you. And, and I know you've written books before. Yeah. Uh, tell us about The Network. The uh, book. Network Interviews uh, is a book that was put out several years ago, and I did, that's when I first met you, I think, when we did that book. And it was basically based around the, the interviews in Network, which was a newspaper that I put out as a teenager with my brother Gordon. And we took the interviews, everyone from Bon Jovi to Kiss to Whitney Houston, Guns N' Roses and Whitesnake and all the big bands from that era, Metallica. And we took the, the transcripts of those interviews and we put them into book form. And along with our friend and your friend Stephen Fallon, we put together stories behind those. So it was really a throwback, a throwback to 20 years. And it was almost 20 years after a network first came out that we put the book out. So when you were a toddler, did your, did your parents know that you were independent? Because I know how network uh, newspapers started, and we're going to share that story. But I mean, seriously, like, were you like three and be like, no, I, I don't want this, I want this? or You know, I, I just said to <laughs> someone the other day, you know, you're talking about being a toddler. When I, was, uh, when I was little, I didn't talk right away. It took me a while before I said anything. And my mother used to say, my late mother used to say, we, we couldn't wait till you started talking. Then as soon as you started talking, we couldn't wait till you <laughs> shut up. That's true. It was, I drove them nuts. <laughs> but were you running for like school office? Like were you like the student council vice president and all these other kind of things? Nothing or? like that. Okay. Nothing. I, I, I shouldn't advertise it, but I was in 13 schools in four years. Oh, wow. Yeah, a lot of moving around and, you know, I wasn't the ideal st student. And I dropped out the day I turned 16. And I joined Suffolk Community College on a, like a dropout program. And, and I ended up getting a two year there. And then I got a four year and I went to Stony Brook a couple of years ago, about 10 years ago, and I got a master's degree. Well, I think that is a good testament to your independence though. That's really great that you did that. Congratulations. I'm really proud of you Thank for you. that. Uh, and going back to network, um, you scooped uh, a story and that's how your newspaper started. So let's talk about that. Because yeah. I, I know no matter how many times you tell the story, I always love hearing it. When we first started out with network, uh, we, we couldn't get an interview. First two issues, we couldn't get a, a, a real interview. We had an old Howard Stern interview that my brother had gotten with another, another newspaper, and we just reprinted that. But there were, the first two issues, we couldn't get anything. We couldn't buy an interview, and we were begging, just begging everybody. And at the time, Bon Jovi was about to put out Slippery When Wet, and that was going to be a big album. Everybody knew it was going to be a smash hit. And Bon Jovi... 
uh, Doc McGee is managing, uh, management, Polygram Records, which is his label, and the New York Daily News made a deal that there wouldn't be a print interview out until they put one out. So as we were sitting around, my, my brother and we had another partner at the time, we were trying to brainstorm on how to get an interview, any interview. And we joked about getting a Bon Jovi interview, which was, was a joke because nobody was going to get it before the Daily News. It was set in stone. So a brainstorm came up, and I said, what if we took a radio interview that Dan Near, you know, Dan O, right, from NEW, he just did a Bon Jovi radio interview. What if we took it with Dan O's permission, and we reprinted it, and then we just print on the cover of <laughs> exclusive Bon Jovi. We blast out, and, and we did exactly that. He agreed to it. And right before the issue came out, we got a fax machine. We never even heard about a fax machine. We didn't even know what the hell it was. And we just started faxing out that network, this new newspaper, scooped the daily news. And again, it was, we were laughing when we were doing it. Uh, the head of Polygram's publicity, I'll keep her name out. She's, she's a friend. She's <laughs> wonderful. Uh, she came out and, and uh, furious. She was furious, and the, the lawyer for Polygram was furious. And they're basically saying to us, look, if you put this out, if you ultimately publish this newspaper with Bon Jovi's in interview, you're dead. You're finished. So we're sitting around. We all had long hair, and we're in this little apartment in Rigo Park. Nothing in there, just anything. The, the first two issues were in there. That was it. And boxes. We're sitting on boxes. And I said, when you say kill us, I mean, you're, you're going to hire a hit man. You're gonna, I mean, what do you mean dead? What do you mean we're going to be dead if we do it? And, and she said, no, we're going we're gonna to sue you. And she was very, you know, roar about it. And the lawyer's just yelling, dead, dead. And, and I thought about it. And I said, listen, let me be as clear as we can possibly be on this. We are absolutely, absolutely begging you to sue us. In fact, if you can get Bon Jovi in the Daily News to sue us as well, we'll love you forever. We'll love your kids, your grandchildren. <laughs> and I'm going to warn you right now, we don't have any money for a lawyer. We're not even going to hire a lawyer. We're just going to hire a publicist. So if you could possibly <laughs> do this, we'll love you. And of course, they didn't sue us. We put out the issue. We got about 150 interviews the next six months. And I mean, all the top people that I just n named, uh, Kiss, bon, uh, you know, w which is a polygrind band, Def Leppard, Whitney Houston, I mean, everybody you could possibly imagine. But anyway, it was, a, it was an angle, and it, it certainly opened up the world for us. And now on your television show, you have these, uh, and your radio show that you have, uh, you have these great guests. Uh, so, and every time I love, you know, you've had Bobby Goldsboro, you've had everybody on. Well, it, it, some people would say Bobby Goldsboro, that's everybody. <laughs> but we've had everyone from Bobby, uh, from, from bon, um, not Bon Jovi, but uh, Donald Trump to David Cassidy. I mean, we, we go the whole gamut from politics to pop culture and, and more and more pop culture. I really don't want to have a political show. Right. And I've been offered to do straight political shows, and I just, uh, you know, shoot me if, if that's what I'm going to do. I'd rather... I'd rather talk to older rock stars and older sitcom stars and do that. And, and I think there's a market, quite frankly, uh, on a very serious note. I think there is a market for a nationally syndicated uh, radio show that features pop culture people from the, uh, from the past. Oh, I agree. Um, and the reason I love Bobby Goldsboro so much, I was so excited, is like his record was on the cereal box and I cut it out and it was like, <laughs> so you know, I, I'm 49, I turned 49 June 3rd for anybody that wants to know or send me birthday cards. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, so for me, all the people that you have, uh, they were, they're, they're icons, but they're fresh icons, they're new people, they're people from the past. It's like, your show's fantastic. So if Yours somebody- Yours too, oh, I mean, you. I, I love what you do, but Go ahead, I'm sorry. And that's what I was going to say. So uh, when you choose, when you select a guest, you know, is it just something from your own childhood memory or, or somebody that you think is popular and cool today and you just call them up and say, hey, I've got a show? Well, I think people would argue that they're popular and cool today and, and, and mention <laughs> Bobby Goldsboro. He's a great guy, but I, he would be the first to tell you he's not popular and cool today. Kids don't know who that is. I have four kids. None of them heard of Bobby Goldsboro. But I, it's, it's people that I think that I know and that I want to know what they're doing now. So I don't, I, I don't want to do a where, where are they now show, but in some cases it, it, it turns out that way. I want to see how they are now, hmm. you know, and how they got there. And I want to examine uh, the show that's uh, nationally syndicated now that's a commercial is breaking it down. Turning Point is, is in a PBS format and it has to follow a different uh, structure, you know, uh, PBS formatted structure. Uh, as far as the commercial station, uh, or the commercial stations out there, I, I want to know how they did, how, how they uh, made out financially, because a lot of these guys blew their money. How do you, how'd you do financially? How do you make out in your marriages? How are your kids doing? You know, that type of thing. So, yeah, some, some tips and some secrets for success and things like that. Well, and, that and you're and celebrating the independent spirit, which is all about you. So, 
Um, and how can we reach out to you? Uh, turning point with Frank McKay dot com. OK, uh, you know, we, we we should be better at it, but that's that's a good place to start. And Facebook pages. I have several Facebook pages and my main one. I, I you know, there's you could tell my main one, I think. And what is your main purpose in life, Frank? Like, what is the one thing, what is your call to action for yourself right now? My wife and I have, have four great kids, and if we can pave the way for them, if we can open doors for them, whether it's contact-wise, experience-wise, and while we have them where they're listening, they're paying attention to us, if we can open the doors and make their careers easier, pave the way, and I, and I know we're going to hear all about nepotism and everything, I, I don't care. We want to we want to pave the way for the kids, and, and that's it. At the end of the day, if, if, if these kids end up doing what they love, and they meet somebody that they love and spend the ne rest of their life doing what they love and spending it with who they love, we've it's a done happy it. life. Yeah. That's the secret for you. Thank you very, very much for being here, as always. Thanks for having me. Uh, stay tuned for more on Live It Up. This was Frank McKay, everybody. Woohoo!